This is DJ Dr. Chris. Hi, guys. It's your favorite nurse practitioner, Bree. Today, I'm going to be talking about why I switched to organic wine. And I'm still on the pregnancy kick. We're kicking along. So I'll be talking about low amniotic fluid, otherwise known as oligohydramnios. Great. And after that, I will pop open a bottle and see what comes out. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, Bree. How are you feeling? I feel pretty good. Just taking it day by day. Um, I go to the doctor next week, so I'll give you an update on my pregnancy. Um, There hadn't really been any changes. Apparently, you don't see your doctor that often um, until the later weeks, right before the baby is born. Gotcha. All right. So uh, what about headaches? You getting headaches anymore? My headaches are off and on. I hadn't had one this week. All right, good. I've just been extremely tired. Yeah. Well, do you want me to start today or do you want to go? Um, uh, how about you start? Sure. Okay. Organic wine. Um, so this one's a little bit off the physical therapy topic. Uh, I usually focus on <laughs> health and wellness, but uh, life is meant to be celebrated. I was so, like, wine is healthy. It's a great... It's got benefits, but uh, unfortunately, we've sort of poisoned our environment. I mean, our fish are full of metals. Our crops are spraying all kinds of pesticides, and it's hard to get good quality these days. And uh, I have sort of a personal story. So this has kind of been like a journey for me to get to this point. So, uh, you know, three years ago, uh, my wife and I had Sophie. And from that point, I started putting on weight. I at my best weight, I was, you know, I'm only like five, nine. So, uh, but I'm a thick dude. I always, you know, worked out. And when I was like powerlifting at my fittest, I think I was 207. And I got up to like 234, I think at my worst. Uh, and that was slowly over the course of three years. And then I decided to go on the carnivore diet because I heard people had good success with it and totally changed my life. I dropped basically, tw- I think, 29 pounds from that. Uh, but before that, I had this like chronic wheeze and a cough that had developed. I couldn't figure out what it was. At one point, I thought it was COVID, which it wasn't. Um, uh, but when I went on the carnivore diet, that almost completely went away. And the weight loss happened too. And I was like, oh, okay. The carnivore diet is basically you know, zero carb. So I'm thinking maybe this is a, like a gluten sensitivity thing or a carb sensitivity. So, And then we kind of experimented and you know, I had stuff with gluten and it had a reaction and uh, so I kind of penciled in that I am probably gluten sensitive, maybe not celiacs, but gluten sensitive. So here I am. And this has been uh, January 5th is when I started all that. And so here we are in July and my weight loss kind of stalled a little bit. And I noticed sometimes the like the wheeze kind of comes back a little bit. And what I noticed, especially through this podcast, <laughs> is when I drink cheap red wine, that's what seems to trigger, you know, not terribly, but it triggers it a bit. So if I, did, I drank cheap red wine, I would probably wheeze too. Yeah. So I kind of dug into the, the, the why behind that. And I stumbled upon this interview with Dr. Stephanie Seneff. She's a professor out of M- MIT, and she's really done like a lot of her life's work around glyphosate, which is the uh, reactive chemical in Roundup, the pesticide that we spray our crops with, basically. And now I know she's a controversial uh person. Um, and this is definitely not like a open and closed book type of thing. But um, her theory is that glyphosate is like basically causing this increase in gluten sensitivity and celiac disease. So her idea, so there's this whole pathway called the shikimate pathway where um, enzymes that come with things like wheat break down gluten. So some of the issues around gluten is that like our bias can't digest it well enough. It sticks around too long, irritates the bowels and stuff like that. Um, but a normal, like a lot of people that go to like Europe have no problem with bread. They come to the United States, they do have a problem. Uh, so the, her idea is that uh, glyphosate basically kills the enzyme that comes along with wheat that helps break down the gluten. That's if I'm, if I'm saying that right, that's basically what she's saying. So I switched to organic wines and it's, eliminated the wheeze. So this is still theoretical. I'm still sort of testing this out on my, my own, but uh, I think that's the culprit. I don't know. I think, I think she's onto something. So, Oh that, no, I definitely think she's onto something. I've said that yeah. for years. 
Yep. I mean, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> I didn't really understand the whole argument behind the GMO crops thing. Like, you know, because we've always been messing with fruits and vegetables for hundreds of years. I mean, that's why we have seedless watermelon and grapes and stuff like that. Uh, but now I understand what it is. So basically uh, glyphosate came around to kill off. It, it kills plants basically. And uh, you know, weeds are a huge problem in agriculture. So what happened is they designed a lot of crops that were resistant to um, glyphosate. So now they can in mass agriculture, just spray a whole field kills the weeds the gmo crops that are resistant to glyphosate live so it's a very quick way to sort of do the hard work uh but in that uh, a lot of that glyphosate goes you know goes on the crops obviously and goes into the soil and that's the thing you know just washing your fruit off or whatever is not quite enough because you're the um all the fruit and vegetable soaks up the glyphosate from within the soil so it's it's built into the fruit and vegetable unfortunately and so and red wine grapes, you know, unless it's an organic farm, they're they're going to probably have glyphosate all over them, especially the big mass production wines, the cheaper wines. Um, now, also, wait, 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 before you go on, mm -hmm. is it just wines in America or you think wines throughout the entire world? Well, I, I know there's a lot of countries around the world that have banned glyphosate, like Russia, for example, has no glyphosate. Maybe that's why I don't react to vodka. I don't know. Um, but and I think certain parts of Europe, it's and uh pretty sure uh, you might have to fact check me on that one um but what was i say oh well and then i just want to mention there, there's a whole bunch of other things too in the united states that we do are kind of weird like americans tend to like or they think they like a dark deep colored wine um so they there's something called mega purple that they add to these wines there's always additives in there like up to 250 different additives and uh not i'm not saying mega purple is bad but they're just like they're dying our wine and I just, just why, why, why taking all that stuff and who knows what's doing. So I just switched to organic. That's why, you know, you've heard me talk about Scout and Cellar, you know, and I, I am a representative for full disclosure of Scout and Cellar wines. I haven't even sold anything. I, I don't even care about the money. I, I just want to order from them uh, because what they do, Scout and Cellar is not a wine maker. It's more, it's a scout. They go out and look at uh, uh, basic winemakers that say they're organic. They buy a bunch of their wine. They test it out, making sure it's to their standard. And then if it is, they give the scout and seller sticker saying like, okay, we've, it's basically a certification saying this stuff is legitimate. So um, right now I'm drinking, I already popped my bottle. Uh, it's called Our Daily Red. It's just from Publix. It's an organic wine. It's cheap, but it's, it's all right. Uh, but I'm just waiting on my next shipment from scout and seller. So that's that's my decision. That's why I switched to organic. That you know the good ones that taste decent, or you're going to pay a little more for. But I think it's worth it. I do too. Overall health, I think it helps excrete through your body, your kidneys, your liver, all mm -hmm. that a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. I mean, we drink pre, um, like of course, like when I was in college, we would just drink anything. Mm -hmm. But then back then, your liver function and your kidney functions were probably a lot better than what they are now. Mm -hmm. Because as you drink, it pretty much, I'm trying to figure out the word. I mean, the best word I can say is destroys them. All those toxins that you put into your body because mm -hmm. of the additives. So if you can find something a little bit more organic and it doesn't have, and it's pretty much read the labels. If you read the labels on your foods, then you should be reading the labels on your alcohol as well because it has to be on there. I don't think it has to be actually. Um, yeah, th there's always weird rules around, especially the wine world. I'm not sure if they have to disclose that. Even alcohol ca content, there's like a, I don't know the number, it's like a, a plus or minus 2% they can be off by. So there's, this, there's some leniency in the wine world. The content, I understand. Because you can't say per each glass because everybody's glass may be different. You see what I'm saying? Mm. The feel of the bottle, the amount may be just off by the filtration that I understand, but the ingredients should be on there. So I'll have to look into that. Yeah. We should look that's into that. Cool, though. Yeah. So that's it. I mean, I'm going to put um, the link to scout and seller in the show notes. Um, I just, I believe in it. That's, that's why I signed up to be a, a, a representative. Nice. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Perfect. All right.
So that's what I have in the, I, I guess we're calling it the rehab corner. <laughs> yes. I mean, kind of fits. Um, <laughs> so for your weekly dose of BS, that very long word that I probably did not pronounce right. And if you know me, you know, I have difficulty with, with that, but <laughs> oligohydromous, which is pretty much normal terms, low amniotic fluid. So I do not have this, so I'm not concerned, but um, it's just something that I feel like people should be aware of, especially if you're pregnant. It is a silent condition that your practitioner will d detect, and it can usually be con controlled. So it's nothing to stress out about. Um, usually it happens towards the end of your pregnancy, like the last week, the week of or the week after your baby's big debut or the birth date. Um, pretty much what it means is that the fluid is lower than expected that's surrounding your baby, which your baby needs fluid to kind of bounce around and because that's what they drink, eat, taste, everything's in there. Um, throughout the pregnancy, the fluid cushions your babies, allows your baby to grow. It helps with the umbilical cord and the uterine wall. So for someone that is, you know, that has this condition, usually moms won't know that they have it. It'll be found on a prenatal checkup. Your uterus measures smaller than normal. You're not gaining enough weight during pregnancy. I don't have that issue. I've gained way too much since <laughs> I've been pregnant. Um, your baby's heart rate suddenly drops or you have decreased amount of amniotic fluid, which is detected by an ultrasound. Um, occasionally you can have leakage from your vagina or a significant decrease in fetal activity. So if you notice anything like that, I would go to your doctor just to check it out and make sure you're okay. Um, what causes this to happen? Usually it's caused by a leak or puncture of the amniotic sac after an amne amniocentesis or spontaneous fluid leak at some point during pregnancy that's small and goes unnoticed. So it's not like one set thing, like of course, and an amniocentesis is when they go in, they're testing for different conditions. That is a automatic. They put that on the consent. You should know this could possibly happen. But the spontaneous rupture is something that most women probably don't know about and how you should be checking yourself. Like if you normally don't pee on yourself and you start feeling like these just little leaks, I would be more aware of what is happening and just talk to your doctor. Um, let's see. So Who's seems, most common seems, at risk for sorry, this? Huh? Go sorry, go ahead. Continue. Um, pretty much those pregnancies that are post-term, like I said, 39, 40, 41, 42. 42 is the main person that's at risk for it. Usually most doctors will not let their patients go past 41 weeks though. So that's good to know. And then um, how is the baby affected? Um, usually if this happens, they're not going to let you do a vaginal birth. You'll have to have a C-section. And most babies are fine. It's just as long as they, you know, catch it early enough. But some doctors that if you don't detect it early enough, the greatest risk could be a miscarriage, premature birth, or birth defect. Um. So pretty much you just need to drink plenty of water, have go to your appointments, they'll do non-stress tests, they'll do a biophysical profile. And if they have found that this is happening, you'll have a C-section, they'll schedule it as late, but as early as possible, if that makes any sense. Um, if you have any more questions on this, I'll be happy to put a link on our Instagram page. So that way, you know, there's more reading, you can do more stuff, get more involved and informed. And of course, always talk to your practitioner or physician. So that way you are just educated on what's going on. Okay. Good to know. Uh, so some of those symptoms, they seem pretty subtle or easy to miss. I mean, you know, leakage, I guess is not subtle, but I think that's kind of common in pregnancy. That not? could be real easy to miss. Cause if yeah. you're just like, Oh shoot, I have to go to the bathroom because something right. leaked. That's what I would be thinking. Like, I crap, I peed myself. <laughs> yeah. uh, like, what are, what are some of the other symptoms you mentioned? L lack um, of uh, movement to the baby? Yeah, decreased fetal movement. So, mm -hmm. like, my baby girl, I've kind of gotten used to when she moves. 
Mm -hmm. Um, I know if I'm working out, exercising or at work and I'm moving a lot, she's a Mm non-mover. But if I'm sitting on the couch and just relaxed and chilling, she kicks my butt. She goes to town. She punches me. I start cramping. (laughs) So, but if I'm like sitting there and it's been a couple of hours, I hadn't felt her move at all. I would probably drink a Diet Coke. If that doesn't cause her to move, drink some cold water. If that doesn't cause her to move, then I'd probably be a little bit more concerned. Okay. So it's kind of like you're looking at patterns over time and kind of mm-hmm. getting to know how your baby feels. And if something just feels different, you got to use some intuition. It sounds like. It is better to check than not uh-huh. to check. Okay. That's what I always tell people. Good. Get that ER bill. It's worth the money just to be told, nope, everything's fine. Then to be like, oh, I'll just go in the morning. The sooner you go, the better. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's good. That's great information. I'd, I'd never even heard that term before. Oh, well, I'm glad I brought something new to the table. All these fun little Why, things you. were happening. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so are you ready? I am. I'm not popping open a bottle again this week, but I am popping over open a pint of Hagen dodge ice cream. So, <laughs> All right. We'll make the sound effect for the ice cream. Perfect. Okay, Bree. So, what do we do first? You want to go restaurants? You want to go questions? You want good news? We usually end with good news, right? Yeah, let's end with good news. It's always good to end on a good, like, good note. So, let's do restaurants first. Okay, sounds good. Go ahead, you start. Perfect. So, I don't have a particular restaurant in mind this um, week. Like I said, we had really been going out because every time I eat something, I get nauseous. So (laughs) I'm on this group called Naples Moms and there one lady posted about, you know, a hidden gem in Naples. And I was like, she hadn't been listening to our podcast. I should tell her (laughs) to. Um, But apparently there's a group called Hidden Gems and you click on it and it tells you all these cool restaurants that are surrounded by Naples. So what I decided to do that would be fun for the podcast is Chris and I, the ones we haven't been to, maybe we check in, check out the other ones and see if they're truly hidden and if there are gems. I, l- I like this idea. Yes. I think that'd be cool. Th- does the Naples Moms Group know about us? Maybe we need to start putting our podcast in there and they can chime in and give us some oh, su- we'll suggestions. Do that too. Yeah. yeah. I'll be like, come listen. All right. You that's, know. that's your assignment. I can do that. That's not that bad. Mm-hmm. I was like, come on, Naples Moms. Okay. Well, so my restaurant is Giovanni's pretty sure i have not it's talked italian. about this it's very italian and uh, you know i don't really eat a lot of italian anymore because the diet i'm on but i do love myself some meatballs um, Me too. yeah there's certain things i do like you know when you, when you go to your like a, cu- a cuban restaurant for the first time you gotta get the cuban sandwich that's like my barometer okay is it, this is a badass cuban all right this is legit i do the same thing with italian and meatballs you gotta have great meatballs so and they do, obviously. That's why I'm choosing this place. But I also love the atmosphere atmosphere in that place because it's dark. <laughs> so many places in Naples are like bright lights, you know. It's just, uh, and I'm a city boy. Well, I grew up in cities, and I'm used to like a little bit of a vibe in restaurants. And, you know, Naples has, let's face it, has a little bit of a history of being more of a retirement community that, has difficulty seeing menus <laughs> so the lights are bright <laughs> so uh yeah it's always nice to catch like a good atmosphere like that so it's like an a plus in atmosphere meatballs solid a. uh that's that's my choice giovanni's over in pine ridge over by the hospital there that sounds yummy i'll have to try it out mm-hmm. it's really good perfect so let's move on to questions all right i'm feeling sharp today i'm ready I don't know if you're feeling sharp or not. I think it's the wine talking. (laughs) I only had like half a glass. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So this one, I don't think we did this one yet, but let's try it. How many outs are in an inning? Okay. That's an easy one. So I'm assuming it's a trick behind it. How many outs are in an inning? We're talking baseball, I assume, right? Yeah, I guess so. You know, I don't do sports. I know. How many outs? Three outs per inning. 
six. Yes, you got it right. Oh, okay. That was easy. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, they're probably, most people probably say three, but that's half of it. I would have said, yeah, three. Yeah. Three outs and then you switch, but then you have to get, the other team has to get out too before you go into the next one. Right. So yeah, three outs is half of an inning. Okay. Well, that's stupid. Okay. Good. <laughs> okay. Why can't a man living in the U.S. be buried in Canada? Because he's alive. Maybe you are a little sharp, or these are just. <laughs> well, that one would be fair. We've had other ones like that, like um, similar to that one. Where do you but like from a where do you bury the survivors of a plane crash in this state or that state? Well, they're survivors; they're alive. So that that one's similar to ones we've had. So that one that that doesn't count. I'm not giving my credit myself credit for that one. Okay. Well, let's do this one real quick. Mm -hmm. A man builds a house rectangular in shape all sides have southern exposures a big bear walks by what color is the bear why this one's gonna make you think okay a rectangular house and it says all sides are southern facing is that we said southern exposure all sides have southern exposure what the hell? Okay, and then this one: a man builds a house rectang uh -huh. rectangular in shape. All sides have southern exposure. A big bear walks by. What color is the bear, and why? Oh, let's see. Southern exposure. White. It's a polar bear. It's in Antarctica. Are there bears in Antarctica? Have you ever been to Antarctica? No, but I really want to go. I was I like, should, do they even fly to Antarctica? You can fly. Yes, there's like um, a small colony. It's mostly scientists, but there is like a small population that lives there year round and they have seasonality. There's a whole documentary I watched on it. It was like fascinating. Uh, I totally want to go to Antarctica. Okay. So the answer is half right. The big bear is white, it is a polar bear. Mm -hmm. But your answer is wrong. The other part is wrong. It's not Antarctica. It's the North Pole. Okay. Okay. Right. Yep. Because everything's facing south. Yep. Okay. That was close. So, that was close. Half, we'll give you a half of that one. Nice. Okay. I'm proud of that one. I think that was a, a good. Yeah, because I would be like, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Do you, are you giving me another one? Because the, yes. the second one I got yes. too easily. All right. Okay. Um, oh, because I know that I don't think I know the answer. You can't Google this. What was the president's name in 1950? Oh God, I'm so bad with history. Eisenhower. No. Let's see. Wilson. No. <laughs> uh, God, this is embarrassing. I'm so bad with this kind of stuff. Nixon. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ford. No, that was that was way later. Uh, Grant. No. Do you don't you need to stop? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. No, Kennedy. No. 1948. My mother was born. Okay, I give up. George W. Bush. 1950? Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> Is that a trick? I don't get it. Wait a minute. Maybe this person's wrong. What was the president's <laughs> name in 1950? I started thinking about that. I was like, I think it was Kennedy. Well, my, yeah, my mother was born in 48. I believe Kennedy was in office when she was born. I'm not sure what year he got assassinated. Yeah, Google that because there's no way it's either. Bush. Oh, it says Truman. Uh, okay. All right. All right. That I'll doesn't make that. any sense. Why did, <laughs> why did the answer initially say Bush? Yeah. What was the president's name? Oh, okay. Okay. 
I got it. Okay. So we're both wrong. If any listeners caught that, please message me and tell us how dumb we are. So technically, these questions are old. And technically, it still applies to today. So if you listen to the question again, oh, okay. what was the president's name in 1950? Wait a minute. What was the president's name in 1950? Yep. Bush. Explain. Okay, so it didn't say who was the president in 1950. What was the president's name in 1950? It's Biden. Biden is because the answer is wrong because these questions are wrong or old. But if it, you apply it for today, Biden is the president today, and his name would have still be still be President Biden or Biden in 1950. Oh, that's lame. I yeah. don't like it. I don't like it. I didn't get it, but I got it now. I, got, I still got it before you. So, <laughs> so okay. So, in 1950, what was Joe Biden's name? That's kind of yes. the, oh, it's right. still Joe Biden. <laughs> oh my god, that took me a second. I was like, why is Bush on here? But then, like, I googled it and I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> just something's not adding right. That was cute, though. It was cute. a true question. Yeah, I guess that's cute if you want to call it that. <laughs> All right, let's do one more and then okay. we'll do good. All right, okay. There once was a lady who really liked pink. In her cozy little one story house, everything was pink. Even her dog was pink. Her hair, her carpet, everything. What color are her stairs? Her stairs are in her house. Do we know that? Is that, is that so. irrelevant? Okay. Or is he, I think it's irrelevant. Okay, please read again. There once was a lady who really liked pink. In her cozy little one-story house, everything was pink. Mm. Even her dog was pink. Her hair, her carpet, everything. What color are her stairs? The same color as her belts in that condominium association where because she, she's in a one-story house so it's probably whatever the color of the cement is outside no they they're non-existent she's in a one-story there's no no stairs there you go i was like he just said that answer <laughs> <I was like laughs> well yeah, it's funny because i just uh my brother's here visiting and we just looked at an, uh, a an apartment in like a four-story building with stairs, obviously, um, but his, the apartment's on the first floor, so I, I, that's what I was picturing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, good. You got, I think, two and a half. I feel like I did better than that. <laughs> no, because you messed up. <laughs> you didn't right, say fine. the north. Two and a half. I think you got like one. You know, north, yeah, north, south. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, fine. You ready for some good news? I am. I picked this story because I actually have um, it brought up a memory of mine because I have something similar, not as cool as this guy's story, but I had sort of a similar story. So you get two stories in one here. This guy's story and then mine. So the article title is After Man Finds Thief Who Stole His Dog, Instead of Calling Police, He's Helping Her Get Into Drug Rehab. Okay, so this takes uh, place in British Columbia. Braden Morton, uh, his dog went missing. Um, turns out she was dog napped. Never heard that term, but dog napped oh, huh. outside his home in Cranston, British Columbia. Um, so he got a lot of tips, and then they tracked down the woman that uh, uh, you know stole the dog. He ended up talking to her, and instead of lashing out, he confronted and reassured the woman. And said they arranged to meet at the parking lot at a local mall. The woman, still in tears, gave Darla, that's the dog, back the board and apologized. She hadn't acted alone, but she was truly remorseful for her role in the crime. So Morton had an epiphany. He realized that she was a drug user. She admitted the whole plot was a means to get money to buy drugs. And the reason Morton knew was that he'd once been an addict himself. So he's been clean and sober since May of 2015. Uh, and he's also done some volunteer work as a counselor working in the field. So basically, instead of giving her, because there was all this reward money out there and everything, so he offered to pay for her rehab if she would commit to it. 
um, and I forget where it goes. I don't think it's come to fruition yet, but she agreed to it. Um, so yeah, that's the story. So instead of like lashing out, suing her, or doing the stuff that most people would do, he basically changed his mind, changed his tune, and said, "Look, I've been there before, and uh, I will pay for your rehab." Uh, Facebook got a hold of it, and then um, I think let's see. Thanks to social media, the good deeds snowballed once they learned of his generosity. Not only did Morton's Facebook cronies pick up the tab for another week's rent, they found them. Oh, there was a second man involved who also um, he basically gave sort of the same deal to. And Facebook cronies picked up the tab, put this guy in an apartment because he was uh, homeless. So there you go. Good deed. There's good people out there. So um, Oh, I still believe in that. Yeah. And I have a little bit of a story, as I mentioned. So well, in my mid-20s, I was living in Boston. And I was bartending at this place called Mistral, a really nice restaurant. But it was in kind of a, back then, a bit of a seedy part town, the south end. It was still kind of an up-and-coming neighborhood. There was still some homelessness around and stuff like that. So I would typically get out around 2 o'clock in the morning because you know, we have to shut down the bar and clean up. And I had this little Acura Integra back then and... I had it parked on, I think it was Boylston Street, I believe. Anyway, it's right outside of the restaurant. And um, I get out of the restaurant, walking towards my car, and I see the light on in the cabin in my car. And I'm like, oh, shit, I'm going to have a dead battery. As I cross the street and get, you know, my vision gets in line with the car a little more, I see my shotgun door is open. And I see a leg sticking out of the door. Like someone's clearly sitting in a shotgun. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm being robbed. So like an idiot, I took my keys and I laced them through my fingers to sort of make brass knuckles in a sense. And I ran to the car, grabbed the by guy by the collar and just put my keys right up to his throat. I'm like, get out of my car, get out of my car. Uh, so he, he gets out. Luckily, he <laughs> was a sane person, didn't like kill me. Um, and all right, give me everything. So he, he has his backpack full of all my stuff. He starts handing me back some stuff. Well, there was actually this really funny moment where... I had this electric shaver that I had lost and he pulls it out and he hands it to me. And I was like, Oh dude, where'd you find that? <laughs> I've been looking at it for months. He's like, yeah, I was in your center console. I was like, Oh shit. Thank you. So anyways, I, I started like talking to him and I was like, you know, what's going on? Why are you doing this? And he, you know, gave me a story. Like I'm homeless. I got kids. I just, you know, I, you know, I, I have nowhere to turn to. Um, and so <laughs> I, this is kind of crazy to me that I, cause I don't know if I'd react the same way these days, but I gave him 40 bucks. I gave him my cell phone number. And I was like, look, man, I need you to turn this shit around. You, I want you to try to do this. I, I pointed him in the direction of a potential job. I want you to call me in a week. Let me know how you're doing. Um, and then I went back to the restaurant, told the story. <laughs> Everyone thought I was freaking crazy. Uh, and I was definitely young and naive and, I don't know, whatever, <laughs> pumping with a little too much confidence. And uh, sure enough, he called me a week later. I didn't really expect him to, but he called me. He's like, thank you so much. Like, I'm doing much better. I, you know, I found a job. I don't know if he was giving me some BS, but, you know, I felt good that, like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I made an impact in his life. Maybe so, you helped somebody. I don't know. I like to think so. Hopefully. So you if you're out there listening, let me know. <laughs> that would be cool if he did hit you up. I know. Who knows? But I even had him programmed into my cell phone at one point um, many, many years ago. So that's my my story. <laughs> I like it. That yeah. could have been a good news up today, too. But I'm glad it kind of coincided. Yeah. Yeah, it made me feel good. That's the right word to use. Whatever. Anyway. Anyway, anything else you got on your mind, Bree? No, I think that's it for this week, guys. Um, like I said... Continue to hit us up. Let us know what you want to hear, what you want to talk about. I'm sure y'all over my pregnancy series, but I have a few more weeks to bitch. So y'all are going to be right there with me. <laughs> and then we will go into other news. I think our listeners are loving it. I hope so. <laughs> y'all are the best. All right, guys. So make sure if you're a wine drinker, get organic. It's just so worth it. You know, Spend a little more money on yourself, your health. It's just worth it. Yes. I mean, you go out to a bar and you know spend 100 bucks or whatever on food and drinks. Spend the $25 on a, a nice bottle of wine. Treat yourself right. I agree. I agree. 
Okay, Bree. So let's wrap this one up. This is DJ Dr. Chris. And it's your favorite nurse practitioner, Bree. This is Poppin' Balls. We'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Thank you.